All right, hey, welcome back to the garage, guys. Uh, so today we're gonna be doing our first bigger upgrade on the Civic. So we've been doing some of the little things, getting used to the channel, getting everything together. But today we're gonna start working on the new intake manifold. So this is an RBC intake manifold compared to the K24 manifold, which is huge. It actually runs up under here, comes across, comes around and puts things at weird angles inside the car. This will go in, it'll set up, take about the same amount of space, but shoot straight. So one nice thing about this, this is actually a Honda factory part that you can just order through Honda and it flows so much better than the K24 manifold. So we'll go ahead and get started on running this thing in there. So for us to get into this, uh, there's quite a few things that we're gonna need to take out. There's vacuum lines, injectors, fuel rail, coolant lines, uh, a few sensors and things like that, that we're gonna have to take off of this. So it's gonna take quite a few different uh, tools and approaches to get stuff off. And we'll kind of tackle them as we get in there, but we couldn't go anywhere without the rolly cart. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with taking off this front tray and uh, start exposing the fuel rail and I'll start unplugging everything and come along for the ride. magnet tray there we go and we've got the fuel rail fuel injectors and the fuel line that's coming in so this is one of the weird things with the k24 factory manifold and the center feed k tune rail is you have to feed it up out and around whereas with the rbc manifold we're going to be able to run it down through the runners and across so it's going to clean up the engine bay and help take risk of damage to the fuel line out Okay, so we've got most of the stuff taken off of the top side. I'm kind of just working top down. Uh, have brake booster vacuum line, uh, PCV valve. Um, I have all the sensors unplugged, uh, TPS, map sensor. Uh, also pulled the intake off and the throttle cables out. So our next steps are to start getting ready to take the intake manifold off as well as the fuel rail. So one thing that we need to make sure we do is disconnect the negative terminal from the battery, and then we need to depressurize the fuel system. So the way that you do that is you just open up your gas cap and it should, uh, should depressurize. We are gonna get some fuel that'll come out of there. We'll just have to clean it up, but this will help keep pressurized fuel from shooting out at us. Three of the four injectors. There we go. All right, so this is the last bolt here. Um, this is a two piece manifold, so it will split along this line. Uh, since the uh, engine is in the car still, it's just a little bit easier to take it apart like this, and it's also going to give us better access to the bolts that actually bolt to the head that are up underneath the manifold. Since this one kind of curls up under and blocks a lot of stuff. So I'm gonna put this bolt down. And should just pull out and up. All right, we're caught on something. Let me see what we've got going on under here. So there's a bracket to the front of the block that's directly underneath where the throttle body sits. So uh, let me go ahead and get in there and then we'll get this popped off. So I got the bracket off now, uh, started trying to see if there's anything else stuck to it and it looked like the throttle body was clashing with our upper radiator hose here. So I went ahead and pulled that off and set it off to the side. 
uh, with the throttle body that I'm using is uh, uh, the K20 throttle body. The K24 is drive by wire. And with how this swap is set up, it has to be uh, use a throttle cable. So you have to use that. And that's where this uh, this adapter plate comes in. It lets you use the K20 throttle body on a K24 manifold. So let's go ahead and get this off here. There it is, there's the front half. So nothing like uh, a bunch of 90 degree turns to get your air into your engine. Uh, it slows down efficiency and creates turbulent airflow. Um, the longer runners, however, on this is better for torque. But since we're gonna be going uh, forced induction on this, swapping over to the R RBC intake manifold is gonna help us out a lot there. Okay, we've gotten the last of the bolts off of the manifold. There's two nuts on top and two on each end, and then there's four bolts across the bottom. Uh, there's also this coolant line here that attaches to the bottom of the intake manifold. Now, when you do that, you're gonna wanna get some tray because it's gonna drain the coolant from the head, and then you're gonna wanna keep this hose above the height of the radiator. Otherwise, it's just gonna dump all of your coolant out everywhere. So that's why I have it propped up, and I'm gonna try to not dump it. So let's go ahead and get this top half off. There we go. So let me prop that there, keep it from dumping coolant. And there's the second half of the manifold. So we have the intake manifold off. I just went and uh, kind of wiped down the gasket uh, seating area. Again, this is the coolant hose that goes into the bottom of the manifold, trying to keep that above the height of the radiator. But overall, you can see there is definitely some carbon buildup in there. It's an older car. It's not that big of a deal. Um, but one thing I did find is there is a bolt between my starter and my block. That looks like an engine mount bolt and i have no idea how long that's been in there so this is a fun little japanese surprise i guess they probably when they were pulling the motor out of the car out there before they shipped it uh this got dropped down into the engine bay for some reason and well that's where it found its new home luckily i haven't run into any issues with it but hey got a free motor mount bolt uh, one of the things that we're going to go ahead and do here is we're going to put in a thermal gasket. So this helps isolate the intake manifold from the uh, engine head. Yes, over time heat soak will happen and everything will be equalized under the engine bay, but this can help some of your intake temperatures uh, help reduce them a little bit because your intake manifold is just a giant block of aluminum. And once that gets hot, then it's just going to store the heat. This will hopefully help us with a little bit of intake temperatures. We'll likely change back to the metal gasket once we go forced induction, because the last thing I wanna do is blow this thing out. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and get, get this slapped on there. We'll go ahead and get the new intake manifold routed on and we'll start plugging stuff up. Okay, so the, the new in intake manifold is on there. Got everything all nice and tightened up. Some benefits here already is I'm gonna be able to shorten some of these vacuum lines like the brake booster line. I can trim, cut it to there. Same thing with the PCV line. It'd be super simple. It just gotta cut it here and then it 90s in right into the end of the intake manifold there. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get those things going and start working on the fuel rail. So with how this was set up and it ran up and over, I'm gonna have to disconnect this line so I can route it through this gap in the intake manifold and then we'll be able to put our uh, fuel rail back on.
Never set bolts in or screws in initially with an impact. Only ever run them in after you've hand tightened them a little bit. Beautiful. And then go double check by hand. Okay, so thanks for coming along on the ride today. So we've got the new RBC intake manifold installed. All the um, fuel rail stuff's all cleaned up. We now have the main line running down underneath the manifold. We have all the connections coming up through the bottom of it instead of laying on top. And then we're able to actually route the intake down into that cavity instead of it just poking off into a weird nowhere land. Um, so that's pretty much it for today. Thanks for coming along. Make sure you like and subscribe and then we'll give you a first start later.